Black Eagles was my first house in Fire Emblem Three Houses. It wasn't immediately love at first sight, but as I spent more time away from them, the more I came to truly appreciate every last one of them. Love. Every last one of them! Edelgard slowly became my favorite lord, Hubert turned from just some creepy guy to an astute political advisor, Dorothea turned from what I thought was simple waifu bait into one of the game's most complex characters, Bernadetta became more confident and sure of herself, Petra grew into her role as the future queen of Brigid, Caspar gradually matured, Linhart slowly grew more in touch with humanity, and I am Ferdinand von Eyre turned from an annoying show off I am Ferdinand von Eyre into a sensible and educated gentleman. What I'm trying to say is that the Black Eagles is a house focused on development. It's a house full of characters who are works in progress, as well as a Fodlin that is also a work in progress. That is why it's such a shame that Crimson Flower is so short of a route, it doesn't really give the player enough time to fully appreciate the developments taking place. This video lists some additions to the Crimson Flower route that I would like to see. Just a bit of a disclaimer. This is my first video in relation to Fire Emblem, and I can't claim to be an expert on this. In fact, Three Houses is only my third game of the franchise. This is simply a collection of ideas and mechanics that I would love to play and see myself. All of these suggestions come from a place of love for the game and a desire to simply improve upon what I have already spent 500 hours playing. Oh, and yeah, spoiler warning. But I mean, the game's been out for a year, so are there really spoilers anymore? Happy one year anniversary. Anyway best to be on the safe side. With that, let's get to it. Number 1. Make Crimson Flower more difficult to access. The requirement is that the player must have at least a C plus support with Edelgard to trigger the Restvolk Palace cutscene. Personally, this was not at all difficult to accomplish. If you bring Edelgard along for every chapter, which the game requires you to do anyway since the Rumors of Reaper chapter, it should be more than enough. I think bumping up the Edelgard support requirement to a B or even a B plus would be more effective in a storytelling sense. Edelgard is a stoic character who has built tall walls around herself in order to not feel hurt by what she eventually needs to do, and I think C plus is a rather flimsy wall that fails to depict her stoicism in the best way. A B or B plus would force the player to purposely seek her out, to purposely go out of their way to give her gifts or invite her to tea. The whole reason Edelgard invites you along to her secret coronation in the first place is because she feels a sense of closeness to you, and I think this is a closeness that the player should be forced to work harder for. I'm afraid this might sound a bit sentimental. However, I want to thank you. Because of you, I feel I can walk my faded path without losing myself. If I were alone, I might have lost perspective and become a harsh leader with a heart of ice. But I'm not alone. With you by my side, I'm somehow free to be not only a leader, but simply Edelgard. Another idea is to maybe have a support requirement for Hubert as well. Hubert is someone whose opinion Edelgard clearly values, otherwise she wouldn't keep him as her retainer. I could picture a B-plus supported Edelgard arguing with Hubert behind the scenes and trying to come up with a multitude of reasons on why Byleth should be invited to the secret coronation. I think a simple C-plus support between the player and Hubert would act as a nod of approval from Hubie to L. I had thought you might be of use to Lady Edelgard. But now I am beginning to think you may, through no fault of your own, present too great a risk. I hope you will prove me wrong, Professor. To balance out the bumped up required support stats, I think the triggering of Edelgard asking the player to accompany her to the coronation should be easier on the player and should be done automatically if the player has already reached the required conditions. Three Houses is a game that is meant to be played multiple times, and for most people, the routes after their first will not be played with as much attentiveness. I am the type of player that will literally talk to every NPC, but even I sped through my second, third, and fourth routes. I was just lucky that talking to every character was part of my gameplay style. This tiny detail is something that I think many can and have overlooked. It would be nice and in character for a B-plus supported Edelgard to come to you instead. We are out of time, my teacher. Everyone is waiting for us. We must go. Idea number two. Develop Ladislava and Randolph as characters. 
Ladislava and Randolph are two characters with complicated lore. One is the leader of Edelgard's personal guard, and the other is a guy fighting to prove his place in one of Adrestia's most powerful families. These are two characters with so much potential that we never even got to see. In fact, their deaths in Crimson Flower happened off-screen. It was in Chapter 12, outside of a power struggle, when we were introduced to this duo. They appear in the temporary base, and if it weren't for my previously mentioned completionist playstyle, I would have failed to have even noticed them. Their beige and subdued color palette is very similar to that of other NPCs, which is a shame because I happen to really like both their designs. Ladislava with her wyvern-inspired armor, and Randolph with what I consider is one of the best hairstyles on a male character in the entire game. I guess the fact that they are a part of an army supports their rather generic and uniform color schemes, but it wouldn't hurt to add just a splash of color. This is a very easy way to make those characters more memorable, and it doesn't even need to be some wild and crazy color. I would love to see Ladislava with jet black hair. It's a neutral color that will still make her stand out since no one else in the game really has it. And for Randolph, I would add a silvery blue streak to his current hair. I know he isn't a Burglies by blood, but adding just a little bit of the Burglies blue could symbolize just how hard he's trying to fit in with that family, and that no matter how hard he tries, he's still seen as an outsider. Aside from the superficiality of their physical design, I think adding them to more cutscenes would be nice as well. Ladislava has a line where she says, My life was changed forever by Her Majesty. Now, I lay it on the line. For the Empire! This gives us a glimpse into the kind of relationship he had with Edelgard, but only a tiny, tiny glimpse. How? How was your life forever changed by Her Majesty? Did she help finance your education? Was she a good friend for you when you needed her most? More knowledge about Ladislava's past would not only help solidify her as an essential character, but it would also help further enrich Edelgard's backstory, which is partially what Crimson Flower's purpose is. The other purpose of Crimson Flower is to showcase the other members of the Black Eagle Strike Force, and one of them is Caspar, Randolph's nephew from the aforementioned House Burglies. There's just so much to unpack in the relationship between Caspar, Randolph, and by extension, Randolph's little sister Flaish. But the only interactions we see between Caspar and Randolph happen when they're fighting against each other in other rounds. In these short moments, Randolph is shown to be completely horrified when he realizes who he's fighting. Whereas Caspar does not seem to recognize his uncle at all. This makes for such an interesting premise for family drama. It's a sad story of a man who just so wants to belong to a family that overlooks him and is trying his absolute hardest to feel important. You must be Randolph, my uncle. Caspar? Yes, indeed. So I see you have chosen to oppose the Empire. If so, be warned that I won't hesitate. I'll strike you down even if we're of the same house. You took the words right out of my mouth! For Flaish, she is almost non-existent in this route, but is a big player in Azure Moon and in the character development of Dimitri. By including Ladislava, Randolph, and Flaish in more cutscenes, we could also get a deeper view into the lore of our more main characters, like Edelgard, Kaspar, and Dimitri. Your Highness, what should we do? Let her do as she pleases. Thank you. Very much. My third idea is just a bit of a nice half. I don't think it would really make much of a difference overall, but I think it just makes a bit more sense compared to what we already have, and that is to replace Garrick Mach as the home base. For other routes, the player's team is shown to retreat or return to base every now and then, to gather strength, which is why going back to Garrick Mach makes sense story-wise. On the other hand, the Adrustian Empire is already the stronger side. The losses that they suffer happen off-screen in the forms of earlier mentioned defeats of Ladislava and Randolph. There is no reason for the Strike Force to retreat after every battle. If I'm not mistaken, Crimson Flower shows the Adrustian army pushing forward. I think it would make more sense for the home base to be similar to that of the temporary base from Chapter 12, to give the illusion that the Strike Force is active and traveling and winning. It could also provide an opportunity for the Strike Force's dramatic return to their alma mater during a later chapter. My fourth idea is to have the option to spare every former student you come across in battle. 
I think this is just a more human reaction of a professor and a classmate faced with the situation. I understand that slowly killing off old classmates one by one, chapter by chapter, is sort of crimson flowers charm, if you will. But I think having them spared can accomplish a different but equally gut-wrenching goal. And that is the opportunity to showcase new dialogue and expose new sides of familiar characters. Sparing Lawrence with Ferdinand, sparing Mercedes with Yuritza, these just make for some interesting scene opportunities, and in the end, fits Edelgard's goal better. Alternatively, the presence of this option to spare classmates could be dependent on players' existing support levels with the characters, giving players an actual drive to improve on these support levels. You... want me to join you? The Alliance is over no matter what. The only thing left is to place faith in you and Edelgard. There's still so much I have to accomplish. Thank you for the second chance, Professor. Finally, my fifth and most important idea to improve the overall player experience of Crimson Flower is to make it longer. Now I know that's easier said than done, but we're talking hypothetically, so I think I'm allowed to imagine it. Initially, I thought of adding a grander field chapter where instead of Adrestia versus Fargus versus Lester, it's Adrestia versus Fargus and Lester. Story-wise, it would make more sense for Dimitri and Claude to team up to battle Edelgard. It definitely makes more sense than Dimitri and Claude trying to kill each other, and then later on teaming up and acting like buddies. But that's for another day. However, thinking about it, the presence of the Grander Field chapter in Crimson Flower would take away a lot of what makes Crimson Flower special. I already mentioned this earlier, but Crimson Flower's charm really does come from waiting for each chapter to see which old classmate you're facing next. Having to fight only two or three of them each map makes it that much more painful, especially as compared to how you basically just slaughter the entire Golden Deer or Blue Lions class in one go. A chapter present in other routes that I do want in Crimson Flower, however, is Chapter 13, Reunion at Dawn. Azure Moon was my second route, and so it was the first time I got to experience the Millennium Festival reunion. I remember the absolute excitement I felt as each character popped up in pairs, and the absolute anticipation of finding out how their time skip designs looked like. Yes, I am one of those people who purposely stayed away from time skip designs, just for this feeling of excitement. I felt like Crimson Flower really got the short end of the stick here because the reunion was just something that was simply thrust at you in the form of a rendered scene. One could argue that a reunion isn't necessary since the Black Eagle Strike Force spent the five years together anyway, but the chapter could be framed in a way where they're all reuniting with you, the player, instead. Or Edelgard could just give the same reason Claude gave, which is he needed help to fight off a gang of thieves. I think that still fits in with the Black Eagle timeline. Oh, and of course, a special Edelgard reunion in the form of a proper cutscene like with the other two lords would be nice as well. Quite the reunion, isn't it, Professor? Everyone's happy to see you. Come on, Edelgard. You must be happier than all of us combined. She took it really hard when you disappeared, Professor. The argument that Crimson Flower is so short because you're on the winning side sounds reasonable, but I think there is a way to add more to it without adding too much, and that is to add more paralogue chapters instead. Maps that aren't required for the main plot, but are there for the sake of character development. A paralogue of Petra returning to Bridget to visit her family, or Bernadetta returning to Varley territory to murder her abusive father would be so interesting, and overall just really fun to play. I know that these are extra maps that the devs have to spend extra time and efforts on, and I am already so thankful that they loved Edelgard so much to a point where they wanted to tell her side of the story, which wasn't planned for initially. But again, there's nothing wrong with imagining it. You know what doesn't need extra effort from the devs though, right? Reusing the city without light chapter, aka Shambhala. <laughs> I am Ferdinand von Eyre. I am Ferdinand von Eyre. If anything, it makes the most sense to have it in Crimson Flower because Edelgard constantly mentioned how she is only working with Twisted to accomplish her own goals and not theirs. In fact, in Verdant Wind and Silver Snow, Hubert wrote in his letter that they already had plans to take down Twisted, so why wasn't it included in the route? 
I will never know. The simple addition would tie up so many of the plot lines that weren't addressed at the end of Crimson Flower. <laughs> I'm glad you called me here. So, those are my five ideas on how to improve Edelgard's route and Fire Emblem Three Houses. What are your ideas? Do you agree with my this suggestions? Do you have your own ideas on how to improve the route? I'd love to know your answers. Let me know in the comments down below. This video took me an awful long yes. time to make, but I have a ton of ideas for improvements on Silver Snow, so hopefully I find the time to make more. Okay. Thanks for watching. Of course. Do you remember the day we met? You protected me from those bandits.